Sports Cube. And ServiceNow Knowledge Sport Team is sponsored by ServiceNow. Here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. We're back. This is Dave Vellante, and this is Silicon Angles The Cube. We're here live at Moscone West. We're covering Knowledge 14, the ServiceNow conference. We'll be here all week. And ServiceNow, as we talked about at our open, is a company that's really transforming information technology departments, transforming organizations, really focusing on, on the value side of the equation. All too often within IT, we talk about cost cutting and doing more with less, which is still you know, vitally important, but you know, it's not directly necessarily adding value to the business. That's really what, what ServiceNow is, is insanely focused on with a new platform that, uh, that is catching fire. Um, we're here with Brian Kenfield, who's project manager at Einstein Noah Restaurant Group, who is a customer of ServiceNow, and Jason Wojan, who is the president of uh, the Cloud uh, Sherpa's ServiceNow business unit, a uh, partner of ServiceNow, and, and an organization that really facilitates the movement to the cloud. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. It's great to see you. Great Thank you. you. So Brian, I wonder if we could start a little bit with Einstein Noah and, and tell us about that organization, um, what you guys do and what your role is there. Sure, um, so we're the largest bagel bakery uh, nationally. Uh, we have uh, 850 locations approximately. Um, the majority of our corporate locations is around 460 and that's where we main, mainly uh, targeted for our rollout of ServiceNow. What is it about the bagels in New York City? I mean, it's something about the bagels in New York City. Even in the subway, they just, they seem to taste that much better. Is it the water or what's the deal? You know, they <laughs> say it's the water, right? <laughs> um, but it, it, does, it does have its uh, classic taste out there. Um, regionally, we also have a very uh, broad following out here in San Francisco as well. Um, with Noah's New York Bagels um, having that theme, and uh, it's a it's a great product, and we really uh, I really enjoy working for the company. Now, what's your role there? Uh, so I'm a manager of enterprise projects and IT quality assurance. Um, been with the company for 13 years. I've uh, been handling and managing the majority of all of the major implementations from a software and hardware perspective. Um, I've also been kind of on the front side of uh, implementations to the stores, installations, that sort of thing as well. So um, been had my hand in every kind of aspect of the business and uh, continuing on with uh, ServiceNow and CloudSherpa. So you're responsible for implementation, so you're not the PMO or are you the PMO We too? are the PMO, we're okay. developing that currently right now. Oh, okay, uh, and I will come back to that and sure. try to understand how ServiceNow might might fit into that a little bit. Sure. Now Jason, let's talk about cloud service. I, I love your, your business. Um, you guys, I think, focus on three areas. Salesforce, uh, uh, Google Apps, and obviously ServiceNow, that's right? Correct. Is, that, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. And you run the ServiceNow business unit. Hot, hot part of the company, I'm sure. Maybe talk a little bit about uh, 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 Cloud Sherpas generally and specifically the ServiceNow business unit. Sure, so Cloud Sherpas is a GSI in the cloud. We're focused, as you mentioned, on Salesforce, ServiceNow, and of course Google. Uh, we're one of the top five largest integrators in the world uh, from a Salesforce perspective, platinum on three continents. Largest Google Enterprise integrator in the world, Google's partner of the year 2011, 2012, and also just announced 2013. The ServiceNow practice, which I'm responsible for, uh, we were the first partner in the U.S. Um, uh, with ServiceNow back in 2007. We were the first partner to uh, achieve uh, ServiceNow's preferred partner status, and we're one of two partners to have achieved master services status as well. And you should, should win a, a, a contest for best name. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now Brian, take us back to, uh, how, so pre-ServiceNow, how, how long ago did you bring in ServiceNow? Uh, it's been it? a little over a year. Okay, um, so relatively new. Relatively new. So take us back to a year ago, you know, prior to doing the POC or whatever it was, describe your environment at that time. Sure, so we had a legacy system that was an incident tracking system that was 15 years old, um, was not a flexible database, the architecture was old, um, we weren't, it wasn't flexible, we weren't getting the results that we needed out of it from a reporting perspective, really understanding our SLAs, understanding our, our needs as a company to make sure that we're addressing those high priority needs that have to have attention right away as, as well as um, measuring the concerns of our end users. Um, so yeah, maybe interrupt, you, sure. when you say it's not flexible, it just, it didn't evolve with your business. That's right, okay. that's right. We were, we were locked into um, the, the functionality of the, the database which um, takes a lot of time to make changes. Um, it really becomes you know, kind of a, a snail where, so to speak, that where you put in a, a request and you have to wait for that request to happen where when we moved and transitioned to ServiceNow, um, it, the dynamics of the database and the dynamics of the application allow you to 
do things on the fly, which is something that we were not exposed to as an organization. Okay, so what kinds of things, what was the, what was the main driver to bring in ServiceNow? Was it to, to sort of break that, that cement <laughs> freeze that you were in? Yeah. Uh, and, and, but there had to be more than that, right? I mean, yeah, absolutely. So what we really were trying to accomplish is how can we be more efficient, what can we do better, and how can we make the experience better for our end users? Uh, so what we did is we would go through and what we evaluated as a business is we looked at all the manual process. What are our pain points? You know, we talk about email, we talk about fax, we talk about phone calls, all of those things taking away from our managers that are at the stores that should be paying attention to our customers, focusing on the experience of the guest and not administering all of the information in the back office. So what they would have to do um, before ServiceNow is they would have to go and call our support desk, give us give them the information. If there was any conversation back and forth, there was always follow-ups, there was email back and forth, and it was always thought of as, um, am I really getting the attention I need? And so with ServiceNow and the self-service platform, we were able to transform that and move that into a focus where the general manager has the power. They're empowered to put in their information, send that off, and then with the automated aspects of ServiceNow, we were able to follow up that information and give them what they needed as far as tracking where they were at, um, what their concerns were, and making sure that when we were done with resolving the issue, we could go back to the store and confirm with them via ServiceNow saying, are you happy with the result? And they were able to close that issue out. Now Jason, talk about the role Cloud Sherpas played in all this. So we really were their uh, system integrator. We, we completed their initial implementation of ServiceNow with uh, Brian and the team. We were there to really take their requirements and help them rationalize that into the cloud platform of ServiceNow, make sure that we're working with them to not only take this as an opportunity for them to move towards better or more common practices, but also take this as an opportunity to streamline, to automate, and really to leverage the power of the platform of ServiceNow. Okay, so you guys have expertise in this. You, you've helped you know, dozens, if not hundreds of customers. Where do you start in a, in a, in a project like this? Uh, you always start at the beginning, right? So, um, okay, where's that beginning? <laughs> with, with, with Brian, the, 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 the beginning really was making sure that we had a good understanding of their requirements, that we were aligning well to uh, their particular business needs, their particular objectives, and helping them understand that you know, your initial implementation of ServiceNow is not intended to be your last implementation, which is really what they experienced mm -hmm. with Heat. You implemented it once, and that was the tool that you had for the next 15 years. ServiceNow is really meant to be uh, more flexible than that. It's meant to help and uh, expand past just the boundaries of IT and create transparency in the stores and, and uh, from a key performance indicator perspective, SLAs, and, and really help uh, not only empower uh, the business users, but also the IT people that are supporting that and, and bringing that forward. So where we typically start is really understanding requirements, really understanding objectives, making sure that we're aligning to that, and then making sure that we put the projects in, in such a context that there's a series of improvements being made successively. And so is that really where you sort of started to see the value as you, you started to attack the project portfolio? Uh, well, I think really what ended up happening was is we started real, we started attacking it from an incident standpoint, how can we be better there? But then as we started having further conversations with Todd Sherpas, we really understood the global effect or enterprise effect that we would have with the application, how it would enable other departments within our support center as well as being able to support our end users in the stores. Um, so we took our primary uh, users that are in the support center, our risk department, our HR department, our real estate department, our payroll department, and we're able to take a lot of the manual processes they do, I mean, literally stapling things to tickets and filing them away. We were able to take those electronic forms, put them into ServiceNow, and now we have a smooth workflow process that addresses the request, finishes the request, and processes the request in a timely manner. So were you involved up, up front? Yes. Up front? Okay, so, yep. the, so it was really incidents around the projects that you were deploying mm -hmm. uh, and, and working through the, the, the deployment. And then I presume you, then once it became a system, you, you obviously kept that practice up. Um, yep. Now, are you also utilizing ServiceNow at this point to, to, for pro project prioritization? And yeah, so that's case one, of, one of the work? main reasons why we're out here at Knowledge for, uh, for, the, for that um, reason is that we want to uh, expand our PMO role, uh, expand the enterprise presence and understanding how we can make the entire organization efficient. Um, that's by measuring what we're doing with the projects. Are the projects a priority um, in, in being able to 
have the visibility to our C level so that they understand what is out there for them and help them make decisions that are good for the business. Now it's only been a year, uh, mm -hmm. but, but what kind of impact have you been able to discern? Has it been meaningful, a little bit, you can see the light at the end of the tunnel, huge? Yeah, they're just, um, from an impact and a visibility standpoint, um, what we've been able to do is we've been able to take away the confusion in communication where everybody was going back and forth saying, are, are we really accountable for what we're doing? Are we able to resolve issues? That discussion has gone away um, because of the way that we've set up in ServiceNow with not notifications and being able to close that communication with the end user that's requesting. That's been uh, a huge um, change from a philosophy that we were, how we were dealing from an IT perspective. Um, the other thing that we're doing is, is I think that we're taking the opportunity now with the new platform is to um, revisit new old policies, procedures, and making sure that we're, we are being efficient. Is this the time to change what we're doing and really allowing our departments to be innovative and, and, and set the pace for what we're going to do in the future? Are you, uh, you know, everybody talks about this consumer-like experience, is that something that you're trying to get to, or, or, or are you beginning to achieve that? Yeah, I think everyone's going in that direction. I mean, if you're not uh, heading in that direction, you probably are, you know, going to be lost in the, in the dust, but um, we are targeting that. Uh, right now, we were just trying to uh, make a transition so that we start expanding the capabilities of ServiceNow, um, and th being part of the PMO and, and understanding what projects are uh, impactful for our business is going to be a key um, indicator for us as we move as we move along. Jason, I wonder if you could talk about from from your perspective. I talk to a lot of practitioners, and they I always they always say people process technology. Technology is the easy part; it's people in process. But it seems different in this world of IT service management. It seems like you've you've actually got to have a technology that can, you know, provide a, a single version of, of a data model. Uh, that is, you know, flexible. It seems like the technology is fundamental. Is that true? Am I overstating that? Um, can you achieve this type of success independent of technology? I wonder if you could talk about that a little yeah, bit. At the end of the day, I think it's really about, first, you have to have the opportunity, and the opportunities with creating a single source of record uh, in tools like ServiceNow are what really gives you the opportunity to get force multiples out of your people, your process, and your technology. And one of the biggest things that, and I think some of the biggest opportunities we saw at Einstein, for example, um, was just the opportunity to simplify, right? Mm -hmm. Many, many manual processes. Well, once you get that information into a single source of record with workflow automation on top of that, of course it becomes very simple to ask some very simple questions. How can we streamline this process? How can we create more transparency for your end users? How can we empower them with information? And, and make the process in the stores such that they ask for something once and they can keep a status of what's going on over time and minimizing the back and forth of information. The single source of record is paramount and foundational to that. What are the big mistakes that you see people making when you get involved in a project and you go, uh-oh, and you advise your customer, don't do that because it's going to be problematic, but they maybe do it anyway, and you talk internally and you say, this is going to be a problem, and you, and you sort of get some, you know, a little friction going with the client. What are the mistakes that people make that you would advise them not to repeat? Clarity of requirements. Uh, utilizing the intellectual capital of the people that have come before you. Uh, we've done over a thousand ServiceNow projects. We've seen a lot of customer use cases, a lot of requirements examples. They're industry best in common um, reference points. And the reason ServiceNow is configured the way it is out of the box is by intention, it's not by accident. Mm -hmm. So really taking the time to understand what those different aspects of um, ServiceNow or the configuration of the ServiceNow are, and then to use that as a foundation going forward versus how do I get this tool to look like my old method of doing something, actually uses an, an opportunity to evolve going forward. Right, uh, anything you would do differently or advice you'd give to your, your peers in terms of um, things to, to avoid or things to emphasize? You know, um, to, to Jason's point, we want to make sure that you're, you really understand the direction of the organization, what you want to do um, as far as executing that plan when you're uh, taking on a new application such as ServiceNow. Um, I think the other advice that I can give is keep a, an open mind um, to understand what the capabilities of the application are before you really start setting in stone what you want to do. Um, but also, it was a great um, experience for us from an IT perspective. You know, back in the years past, it's been, you know, IT tells you to do this, you have to follow those directions. In this case, it was more of a collaborative effort with our own organization to really start getting that momentum and understanding what the business needs were. Once you get that going, the 
departments that you're working with understand the value of the application itself as well and makes your job that much easier. How about this notion of ServiceNow as a platform for application development? I was struck last night walking through the exhibit hall where the app creator was announced last year at Knowledge and I just saw the list of applications. It was just mind boggling. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the same time, you got developers. They, they know Java or Python or Roku or whatever it is they're using. Mm -hmm. um, how much traction do you see that capability gaining in your organization, and, and how do you see it you know, permeating? Well, I, I really think that it's, uh, it's, it's something that we really haven't tapped into yet. Um, but to your point, it's something that allows that flexibility and that dynamic to be able to do in what you want as an organization, what you want to do to um, be able to customize it and make sure that you're addressing the needs specifically for what your organization needs. Do you think the hardcore, you know, I'll just pick on Java programmers, or no, even the Node.js guys, right, would say, wow, this is interesting. I, I want to sort of glom onto this, try this. It's going to make me more productive, maybe allow me to train more people. Or do you see them being a little bit resistant uh, to that approach? I, I think you're always going to have that resistance um, because they don't understand the full potential. Now, once they do understand the full potential and the capabilities of the software, capabilities of the scripting behind the scenes, um, I think that they would really, it's, it's more in their best interest to understand that so that they can move with the application. Because once they see how flexible it is and what they can do with it and their creativity, you know, programmers today, they're very creative, it's very dynamic, and, and it's, it's on demand. And if they, they realize that potential, um, it's definitely something that's in their best interest. So I know I'm getting a little ahead of myself when I start talking about the uh, apps that you'll be developing, but so what is next um, on your roadmap? Um, sort of near term, mid term, what's on your to-do list with ServiceNow? Sure, so um, as we saw in the keynote today, uh, they've been talking about IT service management, but it's really becoming more of an enterprise service management. We're trying to attack those still those manual processes that we're dealing with uh, from an organizational standpoint. One of the key things that we're working on today is um, uh, contract vendor management. So having uh, our legal team being able to automate that workflow so that we can request as an organization what vendors we want to deal with, but there's an approval process behind that. There's none, again, eliminating that back and forth communication and it's all in one, one place, one source that they can approve that everything stays in, in uh, the application. They can follow the path of that request, follow the path of the contract and the ease of use is, is really where we're trying to get to there. So that's one of our biggest uh, um, projects that we have on tap right now. All right, we'll leave it right there. Brian and Jason, thanks very much for coming on. I love the story, getting you know payback well inside of a year. Mm -hmm. you know, I always like Absolutely. to see those projects. All right, thanks again, guys. Keep it right there, everybody. We're right, right back with our next guest, uh, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. We're live from Moscone West. Oh, no, Moscone South. Be right back. <laughs>